This is a special edition bonus episode about pricing strategy. This does not relate specifically to voice marketing, but to marketing as a whole and to the philosophy of how you run a business to make it transparent and customer friendly. And whenever you do anything with voice, you should keep those values in mind. Welcome to the Beatle Moment Marketing Podcast, a short weekly exploration of marketing, technology, and career. I'm Emily Bender. I answer to no one, and I make this for you. Let's get on with the show. I want to talk about pricing strategy. Very important in marketing. First, I will share a personal story. This anecdote is what has me thinking about pricing. I have been seeing a network spinal chiropractic doctor for a couple months based on recommendations and research that friends have done. Not everybody even knows what network spinal is. It's kind of a esoteric and little known school within the general chiropractic practice. It's different from adjustments, which is like cracking. There is no cracking with this. Anyway, you can look it up if you're interested. But I found a practitioner who I checked reviews and people said great things about her. So I started seeing her and she said, okay, I do this pricing model. You can come one session at a time and it costs X. You could come month to month and pay month to month and then you get a 25% discount on that price and you have eight sessions a month and then a couple other extra things, doesn't matter. But you could also pay six months and then you get a 30% discount. I said, I will pay month to month for the 25% discount because I was committing to try this for at least a couple months. I didn't want to bite off on six months with a one-time payment because who knows, right? Anyway, after two months, I decided to pull the plug. It wasn't working for me. I really gave it a shot, but just, just not for me. And then lo and behold, she said, well, our office policy is that you are going to have pricing that reflects no discount because you didn't stick with it for six months. So you have a retroactive price hike, 25% more expensive each session that you've come to. And you've come to, let's look here, Emily, 14 sessions. So that's not what I was expecting. I was not informed of that. And anyway, I said, "Uh, no, there's not going to be a retroactive price hike. First, I wasn't informed. You don't have consideration, i.e. a signature from me. We, there is no contract. You say agreement. I haven't seen an agreement. And then lastly, what kind of business are you running where you would do that to somebody? If somebody's not happy with what you're offering them, say, OK, well, sorry, didn't work out for you. Bye. You don't say, well, actually, now you're going to owe me full price on things that you've already swiped your card for. Unheard of. What a bizarre pricing model. I even said this to her. Would you like some feedback? Just on a helpful level as somebody who runs a business and has clients, me, don't price your services this way. It's such a turnoff to the customer. They will feel like you are trying to trick them into sticking with it. And at one point she even described it as, it's customer motivation that I do it this way. I mean, she's a nice person. I think somebody kind of misled her and told her this is a good way to price things. Maybe in their business it's common. I don't know if other doctors of chiropractic do this, but I've never had this happen before. I ended up getting all my money back because uh, I explained to her this is wrong and unfair and we don't have consideration. Turns out apparently there was a contract that I just never saw because the office assistant forgot to present me with that. So I guess I lucked out in that, but I would never have signed that contract in the first place and you shouldn't either. The bottom line here is in 2019, you can't shroud pricing or where you get your materials from or your business practices. Are you environmentally responsible? People will find out. If there's something you feel like you have to gloss over or sort of hide or obfuscate about your pricing or your products or the whole way that you do business, you shouldn't be doing it that way. Nothing should feel weird or sneaky. A few times she said, well, you can always stop at any time and get a refund. The missing part at the end of that sentence was, but don't forget, it will only be for 75% of what you paid (laughs) ahead. No, no. There was a missing end to that sentence. When you're speaking, be impeccable with your word. It's one of the four agreements. Impeccable to mean peck is sin in Latin. Be without sin. Be forthright, honest, and as accurate as possible. I mean, this is what makes marketing good. 
when customers know that they can trust you, that you're not trying to pull a fast one on them, they will feel better about their purchase. This is almost like what you do when you sell something on Craigslist or next door. You want someone to feel good about the thing they just bought. This is why whenever I sell anything, I put it in a nicer bag than I need to. And I make sure the person feels like, oh, they just made a great purchase. Like I sold some shoes that I didn't need anymore. I said, I hope you enjoy these shoes. They're so fashionable. You're going to have a great time wearing them. You'll definitely get compliments. Like whatever, just make people feel good about their purchase. This is one of the things with email marketing. Follow-up emails after someone has bought something, you want to, of course, before the purchase, you have to reduce anxiety Make sure the customer feels safe to pull the trigger and give you their money. Afterward, that's a whole other part of marketing. We're talking about retention and repeat business. You need to keep holding that customer's hand after the cash register has rung. It doesn't end there. And, you know, with the cost per acquisition being 10 times higher to get a new customer than to keep an existing one, this is an important thing to do. When you think about guarantees and what makes somebody more likely to transact, That same thing needs to apply to the pricing model. It has to be clear, transparent, trustworthy, and anxiety reducing. My anxiety went through the roof when I heard, she didn't say the words of retroactive price. Like that's my that's my term for it. She's she called it the proration of past sessions. What? On what planet is that going to make a customer happy? Or even if, let's say I had stopped seeing her, it didn't work for me, I still might have recommended her to a friend but not now. And frankly, when I wrote an email about this that I said, I don't feel right about this and I would like my full refund, I wouldn't do this if I were you. It's not worth a few hundred bucks to have your online and word of mouth reputation tarnished. Hint, hint, what do you think is going to happen if you do this to me? It's effective. People care about their reputation. Head it off at the pass. Have customer-friendly, transparent policies in the first place. Hey, do you have an Amazon Echo device? Then you have to take advantage of Flash Briefing, the short daily news offering on Alexa. It's free and easy to set up. You can catch my daily briefing, the voice marketing flash briefing, Daily Beetle Moment, by going to bit.ly slash beetleflash. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash B-E-E-T-L-E flash, all lowercase. Or just search Amazon or your Alexa app for Beetle Moment Voice Marketing. My goal with this flash briefing is to fracture Alexa's rubric. Come check it out. Brought to you by our friends at Pippa. Pippa is the simplest, smartest way to share your podcast. Visit BeetleMoment.com forward slash P-I-P-P-A to get a $25 Amazon gift card when you sign up. And we thank Pippa very much for their support of the show. For more about the show or to consult with me, visit BeetleMoment.com. Tweet me at Emily Bender. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for listening. I'll see you next week.